running a wee bit behind. So um, I made the huge mistake of taking on um, a subject that you could talk for about three days on. Uh, I'm trying to compress it into 15 minutes. So uh, I did a run through this morning and it was like 30 minutes long, so I have to cut a bunch of stuff out. We'll just have to save all that for future meetups, so you'll have to, you'll have to come back. Um, so I'm going to do my best to give an introduction to WordPress um, theme development and how you, can, how you can get started and some of the things that you might need to know. So we're going to cover theme structure, child themes, um, we're going to look at a custom page template and some custom loop queries. And first off, we're going to see, have a look at just what is a theme and uh, why you'd want to go about developing one. So this is from <coughs> codex.wordpress.org, so right from the horse's mouth. Um, WordPress is just a system of files that work together to build a website and uh, display it in a certain way. Uh, using the WordPress database, um, that's that's it. Uh, you can have as few as two files or one in the case of a child theme, um, up to as many as you like, and you can make it as complex as you like. So why would you want to go about uh, developing a theme? Well, they allow you to take WordPress and basically make it do what you want it to do. Uh, so you've got if you have a a client uh, wants a certain look, certain functionality, you can deliver that. It's also really good fun uh, once you get into it. It's really satisfying to see uh, your ideas kind of come to life and uh, people will actually pay you to do it, which is great. So how do you go about this? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is the theme structure. Cameron? Yeah. I'm going to sort of see that okay. I'll zoom in a little bit. But uh, so this is the basic theme structure. At the top, I've got your site, which is just where you've installed WordPress on your server. Uh, within that folder, uh, you'll find WP Content. Uh, that's another folder, and within that, a folder called Themes. And this is where, if you're developing a theme of your own, you're going to want to create a folder in there, um, give it a unique name, and that is where your theme is going to live. So let's have a look at the files that you might find in uh, a theme folder. So that's a selection of some common ones, um, but there's actually only two that are essential to a WordPress theme. Uh, you can make WordPress do its thing by just uh, just including style.css and uh, index.php, and you can run a whole website off just those two files. So let's have a look at those two first. First one, style.css. So if you're familiar with uh, web design at all, you'll have come across cascading style sheets. And uh, that's basically just, it's a language that uh, styles elements on a website. So you can change color, you can change fonts, you can change uh, the site layout, uh, all through the CSS. So if you're, if you're looking to get into WordPress theming, or you have a site of your own that you want to just fiddle with a little bit, uh, CSS is one of the first things you'll want to have a look at, just learning that. <coughs> Unlike most CSS files, style.css in your theme does something a little bit different. And right at the top, uh, you've got this commented out section, and that is going to tell WordPress uh, a little bit about your theme. So it's going to have information in there, like the theme name, um, the description, uh, who the author is, the author URL, uh, the version number, tags, uh, all this information. And that actually shows up whenever you install your theme on your WordPress site. That information shows up on your Manage Themes screen. So once you've built your theme, uh, the information at the top of that CSS file is going to be it's going to be right there. So this is a theme that I'm working on at the minute. It's called ArtPress. You've got the version number in there. You've got the author, which is Heart Themes. Uh, we've got a description and tags, so that's all coming from the very top of your CSS file. So you need to, you need to stick that in there so that WordPress knows uh, what your theme's all about. The next uh, crucial file is index.php. And uh, that is usually going to look something like this. This is a super, super simplified version of what index.php might look like. Um, so working from the top, it's, uh, it's telling WordPress to get the header, so that's the header.php file. Um, I'll come back to that in just a second. Um, and then at the bottom, get sidebar and get footer. In the middle is the really interesting stuff. 
So this line where I've actually commented uh, the loop goes here, we're going to have a look at what the WordPress loop is and how it works because that's, really, uh, that's really the important stuff that WordPress does. Um, but that's, that's what a typical or, or a simplified uh, index.php file might look like. So I said we'd have a look at some of those other files. So at the top of that you saw get header. So what that's looking for is the header.php file. And in here you're going to have um, lots of information. So you're going to have the dot type information at the very top. Um, so what version of HTML you're using and things like that. Um, other things you might want a site title, site description, a main navigation, basically anything that you want to be at the top of your site across the whole site. So no matter what page you're on, it's always there. So your logo and your main navigation are two of the key ones you might put in there. I've also just put a little reference to um, the WP head hook. Uh, it's important to include that in your header.php file because a lot of plugins actually look for that and use it. Um, to add things like JavaScript files and stuff like that. So it's important to include that in there. Uh, no, no, yeah, go for it. Um, how do you, how do you um, deal with security in it? Because of course, securely, one wouldn't use WP um, as, a, as a printer. Um, I always do. Um, if there's a security expert that knows otherwise, but uh, yeah, I've, I've always, it's, a, it's a WordPress function, so that's, that's what <coughs> that function name is. and. Uh, I think you have to call it that way, unless right. someone unless someone knows otherwise. Yeah. Maybe you're thinking of the, the database name. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's where I that's where I keep it secure. Well, well, that. well, it's just it's suggesting that you don't yeah. need a BB. Yeah, it's it's yeah. One of the better ways to secure your website is yeah. to. I think by default it uses WP underscore at the start of your database. Yeah. So that's something you want to change straight away because hackers will look for that and try to get in. So that might be what you're. Is that possibly what you're thinking about? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so sidebar.php typically contains uh, a widget area or multiple widget areas. And you can also hard code some stuff in there as well. Um, and it will get called whenever you see the uh, get sidebar. Footer, same kind of thing as header. It sticks more widget areas in there. Basically, whatever you want at the bottom of your site, across the whole site. And like WP head, I've got WP footer in there as well. So it's a, it's a hook that a lot of plugins use um, to insert code uh, right, at the, right at the bottom of your site. All right, didn't go to functions.php there. But it is a file that you'll see in a lot of WordPress themes. And it basically contains functions that you want to use throughout your theme that don't already exist. So are going to be PHP functions that you probably write yourself or that you've copied and pasted um, from a blog or something like that. Okay, so that's not that's not all you could have. I mean, you, you could you could have a perfectly working site with just those files, um, but you've also got these page templates, and I'm going to have a look at the template hierarchy. So within WordPress, as well as just a standard uh, page that loops through all the posts or uh, a page that just shows a single page or a single post. Um, you've also got all these other templates so you could click on something like um, a category link and it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you a list of all the categories or you can click on an author name and it will show you some information about that author and the posts about the author. And the ways to um, hook into that functionality is using these uh, template files and this template hierarchy. So what happens is when WordPress uh, loads up a page, it first looks to see what kind of page it's loading up. I'll just, is that working? Yeah, it is. So we'll work from left to right. So I'll look, I'll use these conditional statements to see what kind of page is being loaded. So say we're, it recognizes that it's a category page that it's loading <coughs> up. It will then move across this uh, list from left to right and look for the, the next relevant file. And if that file doesn't exist, it goes to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And they all default back to index.php, which is why that is uh, the only essential file to your site. Because if nothing else is there, it can always use that. Um, so you can do some kind of cool stuff with this. Um, for example, if you 
if you have a category on your website, uh, say you've got a category called news, and uh, you want to style that slightly differently and format the posts slightly differently on that um, on that category, you could create a file called category-news.php, and WordPress would find that. So when you're on the news category page, it's going to look to see if that file exists, and when it does, uh, it's going to display the contents of that. If not, you could use an ID instead, or you can create a general category page, which could look different to, say, an author page or a tag page. So this is, this is one way you can, uh, you can really customize the, uh, the look of your site. You can also do the same thing, can't dwell on this bit too long, um, but with pages. So that's a, that's a really cool thing to do too. Um, in the page admin screen, um, you'll see on the right hand side there's a page attributes box. And under there, you can choose from a custom template. Um, so what you do is you just create the custom template. You need to put a little header uh, bit at the top of that. Can't cover that today, unfortunately. Um, but that's, that's a way you can customize. You can go so far as to customize individual pages. OK, so child themes. So you might have heard of child themes before. I know Emily uh, mentioned. Uh, mention it in her in her presentation. Um, they're a really simple way to get into WordPress theme development because you can piggyback on what's already out there. You can use uh, the great code that other people have written and just and just tweak it and customize it. Uh, it's great for learning. Uh, all the hard work's already done for you. And one of the key benefits to this is that, say you're uh, building a child theme based on something like 2010 or 2011 now, uh, the, one of the default WordPress themes. If you go, if you go in and edit that theme uh, directly within that, within that those theme files, if if they release a theme update, uh, the new version comes out, they've fixed a bunch of bugs and some security fixes, and you click up, you click upgrade. It's going to wipe all your fixes. It's going to it's going to overwrite everything that you did. So if you you want to keep your your edits separate. Uh, if you want to be able to upgrade the parent. So to do that, you basically create a child theme and you set it up exactly the same way um, as a normal theme, give it its own folder. Um, and you actually only need a style.css in this case because index.php is going to exist already in the parent theme. So you can have a uh, child theme with just the style.css file and that's it. And to do that, you remember the little commented section at the start of the CSS file before. Well, this one is slightly different in that on this line here, you want to write template and then the name of your parent theme, and that's it. That's, that's the only difference. Um, after that, the next step is probably going to be to import the styles uh, from your parent as well. So just creating, just using that um, section at the top, uh, if, if that's all you did, you'd get a, a theme that actually outputs websites, but it's going to be completely unstyled. There's going to be no CSS styling to that at all. So the next step is usually to uh, import the parent's style sheet as well. And you just use this line of code here uh, at import, and then with the URL of that style sheet. This is all online if, uh, if you're frantically scribbling notes, because I know I'm going really, really fast. Um, so that's the first thing, import the parent styling. Uh, and then what you can do is any file that you want to edit. So say you want to insert a widget area into the header. So you take header.php from the parent theme, copy and paste that into header.php in your child theme. Go for it, David. It's just going to say on yep. in that style sheet, uh, you don't make any changes back in the parent styles, you make the changes to the styles. Underneath that line yep. where it says import, so if there's a style in the uh, parent theme, uh, say it's a widget header, and you want to change the, um, the text size, you would do it in, in here, and that would overwrite you know, without changing the main yeah, parent sure. Yeah, I'll well set it. should have said that. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, so if you wanted to make a change to the header, copy and paste header.php into your own child theme, and then make the changes in there. So WordPress is always going to look first for those files in your child theme and then go to the parent if they don't exist in the child. So, I mean, if, if that's the only change you needed to make, then you would only need style.css 
and header.php in your child theme. Uh, so that's the reason they're, they're so easy to use and they make things, make things really quick for development. Okay. So here's a few examples. Um, these are themes, all, they're all child themes of 2010. So that is what 2010 looks like. And um, these three websites are ones that I've made um, as child themes of 2010. So they all look totally, totally different, um, but they're all using that same parent. So it massively cuts down the workload. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. You're saying that um, you know, a good reason for using child themes is to not get your old stuff overwritten if yeah. an update comes out for the parent theme. If one of those updates was like some security fix, yeah. how would you know if you'd like, you know, if you're using, you know, functions.php and you copied that and put it in the child theme, yeah. one of the fixes was to fix a bug in that, you wouldn't have known. No, it's, well, I, sp I suppose, like, if you're it's upgrading, it's... Functions PHP is the one that it, it uses both, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Parent, I'm sure. yeah, in, in that case, so whatever you do in functions, <laughs> functions.php doesn't overwrite mm. the other functions.php. But the other That's, side of it is you shouldn't ever update unless you've checked out what's been updated anyway. Exactly, mm. yeah, and you should always update on the, on the test site anyway, but I do, I do get your point. Uh, but yeah, it's never a good idea to update a live site. Um, regardless of which way it's set up. If you don't actually use that page, then, then you, in, you inherit the fix without actually, you know, saying yeah, you, 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 you benefit without doing nothing. Yeah, it's a good chance. Yeah. Yeah. That's not necessarily no. No one does not update which files are going to be changed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not absolutely foolproof uh, doing it this way, but it's uh, certainly better than... Because just, if you're aware of it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you the uh, anatomy, I guess, of what a custom um, page template might look like. We talked about custom page templates when I was going through the template hierarchy. So in this example, I've set up a page uh, called custom page. And you can see down on the, uh, down here is where you can select the template. Um, if that's the way you're doing it. Uh, we're actually not going to be doing it that way. Um, and I'll show you what we've done. So we're going to try to create uh, something like this using our uh, custom template. So you can see custom custom page at the top there is highlighted. So we're actually on that page at the moment. And this is the exact code that is uh, outputting uh, that whole page. So you can see at the top, I've used get header. Um, so that is getting that top section and a whole lot of hidden stuff up above in the in, within the head tags of the HTML. Right underneath that, it opens up some divs in HTML. So that's not overly important to us right now. Um, and the next bit of interest is where it says orgs equals array and then just below that query posts. So what I'm doing here is setting up a custom uh, loop query. And I've done, it, I've done it in a very boring and unnecessary way in this example just by saying post type equals post. Uh, but there's loads and loads of cool things you can do with, uh, with this query posts function. Um, it basically lets you grab anything that's in the database and output it however you want uh, with some limitations. I'm sure there's workarounds for nearly everything. But some of the examples are here. So I've got uh, post type at the top here. And that, is, that can be post page. It can be a custom uh, post type if you've enabled one of those. Um, post per page, very self-explanatory. Uh, order by, you can set that to date, author, title, a uh, whole host of things. Um, the order that they'll come out in, ascending, descending, random. Um, and then you can pull like specific categories as well. So if you set up a category on the website, um, I've, I've used the news example, um, that'll just pull posts from the news category. Uh, and then below that, tags. And this is actually adding two tags together. So it'll look for posts that have the tags of both 37 and 47 rather than one or other. Um, you can also do tag or uh, if you just want to get posts that are tagged with either of them. 
your point list is there at that um, that URL. So I definitely definitely check that out. There's loads of loads of powerful stuff in there for custom queries. So like I said, this is a really super boring example. I've just said post type is post. So it's looking for all the posts. And then what I've done is I've actually started the loop. So the loop is a concept that is really important to WordPress. Um, it's going to look at the database and pull out all the post information. Or if you've, if you've asked for pages, it'll pull out the page information or author information from the database. And it'll keep going through them until it stops. Yeah, Oops. sorry. I thought it was a question from over there. That's okay. Uh, it'll keep looping through those posts until it stops. So in the case before, until it got to say five posts. Uh, so that's everything. I think I zoom in. Yep. On that. So everything between if have posts and end if. I'm going to see the cursor. So down there is the loop, and this is how it's going to be formatted. So I've got an example of that. There is a single post that's been pulled and the functions that are used uh, to output it. So right at the top, we've got the title. So I'm using two functions there. Uh, one is the permalink, which is getting the permanent link uh, to that post and putting it within the uh, href of the a tag. The second is just outputting the title name itself and putting it within the, within the anchor tag. The next function down is the time. So it's when the post was published, and it is using a PHP date format in the middle. So the L relates to the, the long Thursday. Uh, the F is the, the date or the, the month format, etc., etc. The next one down, uh, if you've used WordPress, you'll probably be familiar with excerpts. Um, that is either a custom excerpt that you enter uh, using the admin screen, or it's uh, a just the first uh, certain number of characters of, of your content. Um, next one down, I've got the category. So that function uh, just outputs the categories in um, on a list um, as links. And the tags does a similar thing by default, except it gives it tags at the front and puts it in.